This is Mr. Martin. These are the video notes for section 9.5. We're going to be talking about parametric equations. Uh, so first let's um, look at uh, particle motion given by uh, this equation here. We've got y is equal to the opposite of x squared over 72 plus x. And this is a rectangular equation. This is what we normally are working with. And it's a good equation except the only problem is it tells you the location of the particle. Okay, but we don't know anything about the time the particle was at each location. So if we know an x value, we can find a y value, but again, it doesn't really tell us about the, the time that the particle was at each location. So that's really what we're looking at. So what we do here is we map the particle motion, we map the horizontal motion, and we map the vertical motion as a function of time. So let's take this rectangular equation and let's um, change it into two equations um, both in terms of t, one for x and one for y. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, plug these into our calculator. So what you want to do is you want to um, change your uh, mode in your calculator. So if you don't have your calculator out yet you might want to take that out, uh, pause the video, and you want to change it to parametric mode. I believe it's PAR. All right, and then when you go and you hit your y equals, you're going to see that for your first set of equations, you're going to have an x equals and a y equals. And when you hit the x key, it's going to give you a t instead. So go ahead and enter these into uh, your calculator uh, for your x's and your y's. Be careful. Make sure when you do square root of 2 that you close your parentheses before you put your t. And we're going to go ahead and graph this. All right, so um, for this particular one, what we want to do is if you go into your window and we want to change our t min to equal negative 0 0.5 and we want our t max to be 2.5. All right, so we're only going to graph between negative 0.5 and 2.5 for our values of t. All right, and then we're going to get x and y values at each one of these times. And when we look at the trace key, um, it's going to tell us the time, the x position, and the y position for each value. All right, and then we're going to change our t step to 0 0.06. Okay, so. This is kind of like our delta x and delta y, how often it, it's going to graph an x or a y value. So if we make it anything larger, uh, we're not going to get a good graph. And if we make it anything much smaller, it takes a really long time to graph it. Um, and when we look at some of the other examples, we're going to actually look at a, a chart of values for t, x, and y. But for now, we're just going to graph this in the equation. So here's what we want t min, t max, and t step to be. And for our x min, we want to go to negative 40 and for our x max we want to go to 100 and then for our y min we also want negative 40 and for our y max we're going to want 20. Alright so enter this into your y equals and then change your window to this and then we're going to hit graph so if you graph it, you're going to notice it's going to look something like this. And pay particular attention when you hit that graph how it graphs it out because it's graphing those positions out over time. So the direction that that's going is important. So it's going to look something like this. We start at a point here and then it goes up and it comes back down and it ends at a point over here. It should look rather parabolic. And if you notice, we only have this section of the graph. And it graphed it out in this direction. Again, these little arrows on the graph tell us how the x and y positions are progressing over time. So you're going to need to put that arrow that shows the direction on your graph. So let's take a look at a few of these points. So if you hit your trace key, it should put you right over here at this point. This is t equals 
negative 0 0.5 and our x position it should be hopefully yours is the same about negative 16.97 so if we're talking about projectile motion um, in order to get a value like this we'd have to be you know below maybe a cliff or something so we're standing at the bottom of a cliff and we're shooting up onto the cliff or something like that and then our y value is negative 20.97 right so and this is at time equals negative 0 0.5 which again really doesn't make sense in the context of uh, if we're talking about particle motion we would normally start at time equals 0 so we would probably start somewhere right here at the origin and then if you trace around to the top here and you're gonna kinda have to um, estimate over there this top point here this would be at time equals 1.06 we'll just say it's seconds and our x value is 35.98 and then our y value is about 18 so that would be the highest value that would be the highest that that uh, projectile had reached so at about just over one second it reached a height of 18 and then since we had our um, T max go to 2.5 this point here where it ends this is T equals 2.5 and our X value is about 84.85 and our Y value is about negative 15.15 okay so again another thing you want to notice here is that your graph has a definite beginning and a definite end based on the T min and the T max that you picked and this is something that we normally wouldn't see when we graph a rectangular equation on the calculator it graphs for every single values but with our parametrics we can get a very specific part of the graph depending on our uh, values of t. Alright so let's take a look at another example again if you have any questions at all make sure that you are um, pausing the video to write those down and uh, asking me the next time you see me or if you happen to be watching in class just go ahead and uh, pause the video and ask. Okay, so we're going to sketch this parametric equation and we're going to describe the path or orientation the particle takes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a chart here for t, x, and y. And I'm going to pick uh, just some random values. I'm going to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So for t equals negative 2, I'm going to substitute that in here for my equation for x. So when I plug that in, I should get 0. And then I'm going to plug it in for y, and I get negative 1. Then I'm going to plug in negative 1, and I'll get negative 3, and negative 1 half. And for 0, I'm going to get negative 4 for x, and 0 for y then negative 3 and positive 1 half and for 2 I'm going to get 0 and 1 and for 3 I'm going to get 5 and 3 halves so really what I'm going to be graphing are these ordered pairs I'm going to be graphing these ordered pairs on my xy plane and again that arrow that I put on the graph is going to tell me how things are progressing over time so if you want to um, graph this on your calculator okay so here's our um, range of values for t that's what we're using those for here and let's take a look and see what we've got here I've got my x I've got my y and I'm going to mark some values off here, 3, 4, 5 this way, 5 this way. Let's go up a couple here and down a couple here. All right, so I've got 0, negative 1. I'm going to graph these in red. 0, negative 1 is right here. And again, notice the order that we're going to be graphing these points. 
and then negative 3, negative a half is going to be about here. Negative 4, 0. So I started here and I'm going this way. And negative 3, positive a half. So now I'm over here. And then 0, 1 over to here. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1 and a half. So right about here. So let's try and sketch this in. We're going to be going this way. So since our, I'm going from uh, t starting at negative 2 and going to 3, this really is the only portion I have. And I'm going this path. This is my orientation of the graph. So when I specify this domain here for my values of t, I'm only going to get this particular part of the graph. So if you want to try and graph this on your calculator, go ahead, you know, work on your window based on what we have here, and you'll see it will just graph this part. Alright, so if you want to uh, go ahead and try this one, go ahead and pause the video, and then when you restart it, I'll have the solution for you there. Again, make a little chart. You've got your range of value or your domain of values here, and um, you should see what you get there. So pause the video, and when you restart, the solution will be there. Okay, so notice here I've got my chart, and again, I knew to put uh, negative two to positive two based on uh, problem uh, information given to us in the problem, and then I have highlighted our ordered pairs to graph. Here's my x, and here's my y. And this ends up uh, looking like an equation. So you can see that the parametric equations that I have here is really the equation of a line. And we'll learn how to go uh, back and forth in between different forms. Um, again, we've got the little arrows on the um, graph to show our orientation. So make sure you have that on there. Uh, and if, again, if you want to practice uh, graphing these on your calculator and tracing out some points, I would go ahead and do those. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I'm going to start the next um, video with the other examples. Um, the first one will be worked out for you when you get there. And then we'll go through a couple of the other examples together. Uh, again, if you had any questions, make sure that you um, write those down and ask me as you go. We'll see you next time.